Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. Last weekend, Democrats and Republicans gathered with their respective parties to choose their nominations for the upcoming elections. We know it's a big election year. The entire legislature on the ballot, the constitutional offices, the governor, congressional seats, and one of the biggest races, the race for U.S. Senate. U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal running for another term. And Republicans have made their pick, you just saw her on your screen right there, endorsing former House Republican leader Themis Claritus. We've known her well over the years here on The Real Story, and we welcome her back to talk about where she stands and some of the biggest issues our country is facing and what she thinks she can do for Connecticut if she heads to Washington. Good morning to you. Good morning, Jen. Okay, so first of all, just your reaction to getting the GOP nomination. I mean, that's a big deal. It is a big deal, and I was honored to get the endorsement of, of the Connecticut Republican Party, um, where nearly 60 percent of the people decided I was the best person to beat Dick, Dick Blumenthal. Um, there was such a broad coalition of Republicans there, people that believe in all different things. Um, but they recognized I was the only candidate in the race who's ever won an election. I won 11 elections in a Democrat-leaning district. Um, I was the top fundraiser in the first quarter. And it's we don't have time uh, for on-the-job training here. I mean, we need somebody who's proven, who's a fighter, who's gotten in the trenches and knows how to run and win elections, and I'm the only one that's done that. Well, we know politics can be a dirty game, and, you know, you have been uh, attacked, no doubt. I mean, you still have um, possible... Uh, competition right now because it looks like we might be having an August primary. We know that Leora Levy, who's a member of the Republican National Committee, is uh, looks like plans to still run in the August primary. And Peter Lumage, who we've had on this program before too, uh, both of them, it appears, still poised to do that August primary. Um, and, you know, I was reading a Kevin, Kevin Rennie's blog, and it's it, the night of the convention, all of the delegates, or some of the delegates, get this text on their phone, which is a direct attack on you, saying, did you know Themis Claritus admitted to voting for Biden and has been endorsed by leading Democrats in Connecticut, like Matt Lesser? She's also pro-abortion, anti-Second Amendment, and supported COVID mandates. How will she carry out Republican agenda uh, with so many entanglements with special interests like Eversource and the left? Obviously talking about um, your marriage to an Eversource executive. So, you know, your reaction when that text message went out? Where do we start, Jen? I guess my, my first, first of all, it, it was mostly lies. I mean, first of all, I've never admitted to voting for Joe Biden since I never voted for Joe Biden. I certainly couldn't admit to it. But in the big picture, this is exactly what people hate about politics these days. This is why it's hard for us to get good uh, and solid and competent candidates to run for office, because who wants to go through that, right? And because it was sent anonymously, Jen, anonymously at least if you feel strongly about something you should put your name to it if you feel strongly about something that somebody did or did not do something you should put your name on that text or that email or that letter we live in a world of cowardice right now politicians love to talk and say things but the people that are elected usually say them because they're elected officials and you know who they are but social media and text and all of these things this is exactly what people don't like about politics and really i was saddened by it but i'm used to it again i'm the only one in this race that's ever won an election i know the ups and the downs and the good and the bad and unfortunately if i believe that i want to do what's best for connecticut and serve as our united states senator then i have to go through it i just would hope that uh, people would would see would see these kind of antics for what they really are. I mean, obviously, during that they were trying to ignite the conservative base within the GOP, right? Because you are known as a social moderate, uh, fiscal conservative. I think that's accurate to say. Um, uh, and I know, uh, you know, despite maybe you saying you're not voting for Joe Biden, I'm reading that you did not uh, vote, declined to vote for Trump in 2020, it looks like. Uh, correct me if that's wrong. And, you know, you have supported abortion rights before. You've supported gay marriage. In the past, you've described yourself more as a fiscal conservative. So uh, your opponents here, someone like Leora Levy, who is a member of the Republican National Committee, are going after that. Why do you think a social moderate or someone who is also a fiscal conservative within the Republican Party could do better in the state in that general election? Because Connecticut as a whole are, I believe, fiscally conservative and socially moderate. We're Republicans, and we sometimes forget that we believe in smaller government, and by definition, that means staying out of people's lives as much as possible. I believe people should live 
the lives that they want to live. I believe in LGBTQ rights. I am pro-choice. I have been pro-choice my entire career, but that does not make me pro-abortion. I've, I've oftentimes lately used the, the Bill Clinton line, uh, which may be one of the few things I agreed with him on, that abortion should be legal, safe, and rare. Um, I think uh, Representative Fiorello from Greenwich actually used that two weeks ago also, which I agreed with. No, but I don't believe anybody is pro-abortion, but we believe women should have a right to choose. But we also believe in personal responsibility, right? We don't believe it should be a form of birth control. We believe you should be able to make a decision earlier on in your pregnancy. Um, we believe in exceptions for rape and incest and life and health of the mother. We believe in these things because women, it is not my decision to make for somebody else. All right, so let's get right into it with what Congress is dealing with right now. Um, obviously, we're all waiting on the decision from the U.S. Supreme Court about Roe v. Wade. Uh, we know that Democrats tried to pass um, and tried to codify Roe v. Wade last week. Would you have looked at that legislation? Well, you would obviously have looked at it, but would you have signed that legislation? Um, or would you have opposed it? I think you're you're talking about the women's health legislation. Yeah, the, is what, that what it was? What U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal um, headed up. I think I thought they were voting on it yesterday, on Wednesday this week. If 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 I'm correct, you know that was a very very broad and big bill that had a lot of things in it. Um, it wasn't as as we know with legislation, right? As as I know because I'm the I'm the only one that's been in the legislature. Uh, in this race. So I would have to sit down and really look at it clearly before I would know um, if I could vote for it or not. You know, it's so interesting because when you do look at your record and how you voted before, and then you look at Congress, a very divided Congress, you say, where would Themis Claritus go here? Because obviously, you know, the Republican National Party goes a certain way. You have this group of senators like Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Mitt Romney. Do you see yourself in that grouping where you could be, you know, the individual deciding certain votes for the country? Or where do you see yourself there? Well, it's, it's interesting you bring that up because I know Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins both put in their own bills because yes. they opposed that women's health because it was too broad. Mm -hmm. And that made sense to me. Again, I would, you know, I'm not there and I, I don't, I'm not privy to all the information in regards to the bill. But that made sense to me because that seemed like a common sense, reasonable approach. I will just tell you this. In the 22 years I was in the Connecticut House, in the last six years as leader, I was known as somebody who listened to everybody. Sometimes people change my mind. Sometimes I change their mind. But I always put Connecticut first and I did what was best for Connecticut and if I'm lucky enough to be in the United States Senate I wouldn't care who was mad at me happy with me who looked at me sideways it wouldn't matter to me it wouldn't matter who agreed or disagreed with what I thought my job is to think of Connecticut first and the United States of America and that's what I would do uh, we were just talking before we started this segment and you got a pretty big endorsement um, from the Connecticut State Police your reaction to that the day after I announced, they had called me, the Connecticut State Police called me and said, Themis, we would like to endorse you. We want to be the first ones to do it. We want, we don't want anybody else to endorse you first. And they, they did a nice press conference up in their office and they were asked, well, you normally endorse Democrats. You've, I believe, always endorsed Dick Blumenthal. What's changed? And they said, we used to believe that he cared about people safe and we don't believe that anymore. Uh, we've worked with Themis for many years, and we know her first and foremost priority is making sure the people of Connecticut are safe. I mean, you can't say, as um, President Biden has and Senator Blumenthal, you can't say we should defund the police and then wonder why crime is spiking. You know, those two things don't don't go hand in hand. So I was very proud of that and very thankful to them for their belief in me. Because I am the only law and order candidate in this race. Yeah, t talk to me about um, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Why do you think that you would do a better job than him in Congress for Connecticut right now? Well, first and foremost, he is the uh, the Joe Biden of Connecticut. And I say that because he has voted with Joe Biden almost 100 percent of the time. And we have seen what the Biden Blumenthal policies have brought us in this state and in this country. We've seen the eight and a half percent inflation. We've seen crime on the upsurge. We've seen borders. Um, in a place that we haven't really seen them before. I've been very fortunate to work with many parents groups in this state who had children that, that passed of fentanyl overdoses. And almost 90% of the ingredients from fentanyl, cocaine, and heroin come from China to the Mexican cartels, and 90% of it comes through those borders. Fentanyl is the number one killer of adults 18 to 45 in this country. That is an epidemic. A large part of that is because our borders are not secure. 
First and foremost, as elected officials, is it health and safety something we have to put at the front of everything we do? And you know, you can't say, you know, you can't say, well, they have nothing to do with each other. They are completely connected. Crime has increased. Drug deaths have increased. Fentanyl has become an ep epidemic. And a lot of that is because of the fact that our borders are not secure. And as a United States Senator, I would do anything I could to make sure we have secure borders. When we're talking about secure borders, are we talking about the wall that former President Trump wanted to build? What do you look at? Where do you see weaknesses? Listen, when, when you talk about a wall, I mean, you can't build a wall that's high enough. Somebody will get over it. I mean, the fact is, there's a wall. There's a physical wall. There's an electronic wall. There are drones. Um, they're, they're putting many more Border Patrol agents. There was, there was a commitment to put a certain amount of Border Patrol agents a few years ago, and that never happened. So this is, this is a large-scale solution. It is not just a wall. It's just not electronic surveillance. It's just not border agents. It's all of it combined, and I think we have to look at it like that. I want to get your take on Ukraine. Do you think President Biden has made good decisions with Ukraine right now? And if you were in Congress, is there something that you'd be pushing for specifically for the country? Well, let's remember that a part of the reason that Vladimir Putin decided to go into Ukraine when he did is because of a couple things. First, he saw what happened in 2014 when he took Crimea. And who was president and vice president of that? Obama and Biden. He took Crimea with almost no effort. Then. He saw what happened in Afghanistan, how we let our own people there to die. And he said, hey, this isn't going to be so tough. So he went in and we heard the president. We heard the president talk about sanctions, right? And he said, well, let's wait till they go in. Does that make any sense to anybody? Shouldn't we be doing things to preempt a war over there instead of waiting till a war starts? You know, so we have to look back on why this whole thing happened. And, and he is, President Biden and Dick Blumenthal are our large reason why this happens. They didn't take a strong stance in the first place. The other issue is the very first thing that Biden did, uh, with certainly not with any stopping from Dick Blumenthal, is he closed down the XL pipeline and he closed down a lot of these oil and gas leases. Now, what did that do? That made us reliant on Russia. And now this is going on. And what happens? Oh, now we can't buy from Russia, which we shouldn't have been in the first place. But who are we looking to now? Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Iran. These are countries we want to be relying on. So this is part of the problem. You have a weak leadership team, a weak president, a, a weak Democrat majority in the House and the Senate down there. And Biden and Blumenthal have been almost hand in hand the whole way. You cannot look weak and expect other countries to not do things that we don't want them to do. Should the U.S. be doing more in Ukraine? to interfere? Well, I think we should be helping them with, with their weapons and things that can allow them to fight for themselves. They clearly are a, are a country and a people who believe strongly in their freedom, freedoms. And we certainly support any country that believes in their freedoms. So we should be helping them as we've been doing and, and we should do more to give them weapons and planes and, and jets and different things that will help them uh, fight for themselves. All right, I want to bring it back here at home and close this out with, you know, the next hurdle that you have is that August primary. Uh, and with an August primary means that the Republican candidates are going to be at each other and uh, attacking each other, no doubt, as we go just months away to the election. So what, what's your strategy? What are you hoping to, to get out of that challenge? And are you concerned about what could happen when you have potentially three candidates tearing each other apart before the general election? Well, certainly everybody has the right to run. The question is, should they run? And if you really cared about this party and this state and this country, if you really believe that Dick Blumenthal is not the right person to be our U.S. senator and a Republican in charge is better to do that, we should be getting behind all of our nominees right now. Uh, having said that, it's certainly their right to do it. And for me, I am running against Dick Blumenthal right now, and my job is to tell people who I am and why I believe I'm the best candidate. Again, I'm the only candidate who has ever won an election. I've won 11 elections in Democrat-leaning districts. I'm the only candidate that's been in a legislature. And I'm the only candidate who is a known fighter and a known winner. And I think that what we need is a proven success to, to go to no, into November 
uh, and fight Dick Blumenthal and take that seat back and give Connecticut and this country back to the people. That is clear. It is U.S. Senate candidate. Thanks for coming on The Real Story once again. Thank you. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, you can head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 News app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.